Trevor Lazar here with Operations Training and Safety. I have the privilege and opportunity to provide a quick overview of our newest Type 3s coming to the field soon. They will be going to Station 58, Station 64, and Station 51. As you'll notice, one of the largest changes of our new Type 3s is the body style. That's because we went from an international chassis to a Freightliner. This has provided us some exciting advantages. One of those is we were able to go to a Cummins engine that is standard now with our fleet, a larger cab, as well as more visibility through the windshield. With the larger cab, it has also provided us the ability to have four air ride seats, as well as an air conditioner in the back of the cab for the firefighters to help with rehab and comfort. Starting on the driver's side, you'll notice some of the changes. First, we have the Quick Connect charge port. You'll see these become standard on most of our apparatus. It will work with any of our charge cords, and then obviously it will just quick connect um, out of the uh, engine. Down below here, you'll see that we have a deaf engine now, so that's different than our older Type 3s. These are now deaf. Another change you'll notice on these new Type 3s from our previous is we no longer have a compartment door underneath the passenger firefighter from the driver's side. The reason was we now moved all of our batteries to one location. So as you'll notice, behind this compartment, all of our batteries are located in the same location. Moving on to our pump panel, as you notice, this is very similar to our older generation Type 3s. From here up is our aux pump panel. Down below is our main pump panel. The main difference is we went from a veneer or manual throttle to electronic style throttle. This is gonna be the exact same here on the outside as it is in the inside, and we'll talk about that a little later. Moving on to the driver's side compartment area, you'll notice in this compartment, we have all four of our SCBAs in one compartment. The reason why we did that was to support our clean cab concept, but also this allowed to have two air ride seats for the rear passengers. Moving on to this compartment here, as you can see, this compartment was left open but this is for two spare SBA bottles. The very rear compartment on the engineer side is where we store our appliances and all miscellaneous tools. This is very similar to our older generation Type 3s in the field currently. Moving to the rear of the Type 3, one of the newer additions, as you'll notice, is there are new mounts for poles. It used to be one of those steps that you could fold out to hang our hose. These poles are located in the rear compartment this is just for ease and more convenience when we want to hang our hose. Behind this compartment here, you'll notice that we have our hose reel controls, our scene lights, and our intercom. The new Type 3s also have a step in the rear. This step on the new Type 3s is a little wider, and it's also controlled by a locking pin down below. This helps prevent the step from falling down while operating in the off-road conditions. As you can see, we've also added a backup camera to our new Type 3s, which provides consistency to the rest of our fleet. Right below our backup camera, you'll notice that our compartment space for our hose has stayed the same as our older Type 3s. You have our hose on here on the driver's side, and then on the cabin side, you have compartments for storage. Moving to our center compartment, as you can see, this is also very, very similar to our older generation Type 3s. This is meant for our hose pack storage. The only difference, as you'll see, is we did add a shelf here to add for more storage underneath. As we've moved around the engine, we've come to the very rear compartment of the captain side. This compartment is the same as our older generation Type 3s. As you'll see, this is our compartment for all the EMS equipment. Moving to the center compartment on the captain side, this is our compartment for all of our tool storage. And as you see, this is also very similar, if not the same, as our older generation Type 3s. In this area, you will notice that there are significant changes from our older Type 3s. The pump panel is a lot smaller. We got rid of one of our inch and a half discharges to provide an area for compartment storage up here. This is a newer compartment that you'll see. Down below, we have another compartment for your drift torches and your flares and other types of storage you might need. Here is another small compartment for more storage. Underneath the cab doors on the cabin side, you'll see that we have a large compartment for more storage and equipment. The reason we were able to do this was, as mentioned before, we moved all of our batteries to the engineer side in one area. 
In this compartment, you will find that there are two hand lanterns and a fire extinguisher as well. Moving to the rear of the cab, you'll notice that the cab space is a lot larger with a lot more room. Moving the BAs, as mentioned before, this has allowed us to provide air ride seats for both firefighters in the back. Moving to the cabin seat, you'll notice that is very similar, if not the same as our older generation Type 3s. At the front of our engine, you'll see that our front bumper is equipped the same as our older Type 3s. You have two bumper lines that are 25 feet long with the nozzle. And in the center, you have a supply line with your hydrant tools. Moving to the engineer seat, we have moved the pump switch to the center console and the auxiliary controls are also just above it. You will notice on these new Type 3s that every window is tinted. That includes the front windshield. We ask that you are very careful with your clipboards, your helmets, or anything you usually store on the dash. You will scratch the tin if that becomes a storage area. Working our way back to the pump panel, I want to give you a little more of an in-depth orientation of how the aux pump works. One of the controls, the one on top, is the one that shows all your engine pressures, your water temperature, your batteries, and just the main controls that you're gonna to need to know for your engine. Down here is your main pump control. This shows your PSI and your actual controls that you're operating here on the panel. So the same as our older Type 3s, you are going to make sure you have the power on, which is your power switch. The green light's gonna come on. An important note is this power switch and this setup is the same as inside the cab. So this switch as the power switch is a three-way switch. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on the up position. As long as the green light's on, you know you have power. Once you cycles through, you're gonna go to your start button. You're gonna start your aux pump. As I mentioned before, it is the same setup as the Type 3s. You're gonna go to your tank to pump, move it to the open position, and crack your tank fill like that. In the aux pump, we work in pressure mode. To build pressure, your switch is here with the turtle on the rabbit. Obviously, to build pressure will be up towards the rabbit. So we can build pressure like that. Your aux pump pressure gauge is right here. Another important note is, as you can see, we have a pressure maintain switch. This switch and this setup, as mentioned before, is the exact same inside the cab. If the pressure maintain switch is on in the cab, you will not be able to build pressure outside. Vice versa is the same. So if this pressure maintain switch is on in the outside, you will not be able to build pressure on the inside. I'm at 47 PSI. To work this switch, if I want to keep it there, I can switch that pressure maintain and it will lock that PSI into place. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, of course, please contact the Training and Safety Division or Brad Burns in the Apparatus Committee.